Coach, talk a little bit about your first year as a head coach. What was different from all your years as an assistant? Well, the buck stops here. And what, what I mean by that is uh, I had been involved as an assistant in every aspect of a program and, um, and felt like I knew what it would be like to be a head coach and be in charge of everything, but it's different. And uh, regardless of if it's ordering team uniforms or socks or um, figuring out if we want to do a Twitter, Facebook page, um, as well as prepare for an opponent or improve our players, um, it all comes across this desk, and uh, I enjoy that, but uh, it's, it's a little different. Okay. Can you give us a little bit of your best style of highlight maybe this year? What, what's the one thing that's going to stick out that you're always going to remember about your first year? Well, uh, there's, there's a feeling that I had um, leaving Furman. Uh, that, that's the memory that I, that I felt like we, we crossed over a bridge that we needed to cross. I remember walking out of the gym at Furman and thinking, wow, our guys are really starting to believe. Um, we had gone through some tough times, gone through a losing streak, and um, battled the implementation of the system, and um, we started to get the system, and I felt like when we won that game, uh, there were parts in that game where our players started to believe in the system, and that's, that's the lasting memory I think I'll have. On the other side of that, what was the most challenging part of this year for you? Uh, some of the losses early were tough, and um, not just for me, but for the staff and the players. And to to go through the experience at Wake Forest when they um, unfortunately beat us by quite a few points, or the home loss here to Wilmington, uh, the loss um, to Coastal Carolina in the NIT, uh, th those are losses that uh, take a chunk out of you. Uh, they they take flesh. Those are flesh wounds, and um, that was the most difficult thing because I knew our players were working hard. And I knew they were in a situation where they didn't have all their bullets in the gun. I mean, we, we didn't have everything in our arsenal. So we were at a disadvantage at the beginning of the game. Um, but, boy, they, those, those losses really hurt. Um, let's talk a little bit about the senior class. You called them the Slab Four. Um, tell us a little bit how that name started and how important they were to beginning this program. One thing I've realized in this profession is that um, – you should never feel like you have to do it by yourself, and, and I'm fortunate enough to have a, a great staff. And uh, through the years, I've also made contacts that uh, I, I really leaned heavily on this year. Coach McKillop uh, being my mentor, I, I was on the phone with him quite a bit through tough times. And uh, there was a conversation I had with Rick Barnes, who's a, a friend of mine and, and, and a colleague and has been a mentor in many ways to me. And, and he talked to me about his first years at Clemson, and uh, he, he had... Uh, named his class, senior class in his first year at Clemson, the Slab Five. And uh, I thought it was great. And uh, the way our seniors worked um, through the tough times that we just referenced uh, into late January, I just felt like, boy, they're laying a foundation. And uh, what, what a better way to describe what they're doing than, than the Slab Four. And um, they thought it was corny, and I think uh, nobody really repeated it, but I kept saying it. And, um, more importantly than that, our seniors did lay the foundation and have laid the foundation, and so they earned the, the title of the slab for. Was it hard to get that buy-in from that group? Um, it wasn't hard for them to verbally say, we're in. Um, what was the most difficult thing was to get the belief that we talked about down at Furman. And, um, you, you know, that's just human nature. You're not just going to believe in something just because you're supposed to. And, uh, but our guys said, March 29th, 2009, in our locker room, they said, we're in. We're in for this 12-month mission. And they, they meant it, um, but they didn't realize, I don't think, how tough it was going to be. I don't think I fully realized how tough it was going to be. Um, and to, the official buy-in point was very difficult. But we, we got the official buy-in, and the Slab 4 led the way, and uh, the stamp on it was at firm. Um, let's just switch gears a little bit, and we're pretty much moving into year two right now. You're about at your one-year anniversary, so um, talk a little bit about um, the qualities, characteristics of your incoming recruiting class and what people have to look forward to. How do they play into the guys you still have coming back? Well, uh, we said this um, a year ago. We said what we're going to look for in our uh, incoming classes are toughness and coachability 
and work ethic. And I think uh, what the fans and students and uh, fellow teammates are going to see in the guys that are coming in is toughness. And um, they're going to see guys that work. And they're going to see guys that listen. So I, I feel like in our incoming class we achieved the, the goals we set out to get, those three qualities. And uh, the other thing that – and we're still recruiting to complete the class. We, we are considering getting a, a fifth guy to uh, complete the class. But we have four that are committed to us right now. And we, we have talent. We have, uh, we have guards that, with an ability to, to make plays. And we have big guys with an ability to get the ball off the glass. So uh, we're diverse in our talent levels and, and, our, and, and our size. Um, but, boy, we're right on the money with, our, with the toughness that we're bringing in and, and the work ethic and, uh, and the coachability that we're bringing in. How do you think year two will be different for specifically you and your staff as you're, you know, you're not in that first realm anymore? Um, well, actually, I, I'm going to answer it um, that it's going to be very much the same and a lot different. And what I mean by that is um, we're still laying the foundation. And there, there is still a lot of work to do just to get our base solidified. And uh, we'll have five new faces potentially that don't know anything about our system. And um, so we'll have to start the teaching process all over again. But you will remember that uh, a year ago we had 15 faces that didn't know the system. And so as I transitioned, the, there will be new guys that don't know it. So we're in the same process as the staff. we got to teach and, uh, but that's what we enjoy. And then on the other side of the coin is we're not going to be teaching by ourselves. We're going to have all of our returning players that have been through year one with us. And that's what makes a difference. Uh, different this in year two is that we're teaching. We're going to try to get better. We have rookies that don't have any clue what we're saying early in the year. Man, we're going to go through some growing pains. But it's going to be us as a staff and our returning players that believe now and what we're teaching. They don't necessarily know everything, and we will expand the system somewhat, but they're in the, they're in the fire, uh, foxhole with us. and So it'll be very much the same, but quite different. Lastly, what can, you, what can fans look forward to as they um, come to watch our team in 2010-11? Uh, excitement. And uh, if you were at the game against Davidson here, that that's what this uh, building is going to be like. And, uh, boy, we'd love it to be like that every night when we play in here. And, and um, the electricity that our players felt that night um, gave us energy. It gave us um, an extra step. And it gave us a few points here or a point here or a point there, a rebound here and there. And uh, come out to Alumni Gym because it's going to be exciting. And... The great thing is we're going to have freshmen playing, and they're going to throw it in the stands, so you may be able to catch the ball. Unfortunately, it'll be a turnover for us, but then they're going to be high-flying and make great plays, uh, whether it's a block or a dunk or um, uh, a fast-break layup or a three-point shot, and we love to shoot the three. So it's an exciting style of play combined with the energy that we're going to feed off of from our last home game here. Um, you're not going to want to miss it.